experience, your transformation, what you're trying to give the world with your film? I'll go to back to where it all started. Yeah. I grew up watching the great science fiction. I'm, I'm a big sci-fi fan, so I grew up with Star Trek and Twilight Zone, Outer Limits, you name it. Um, and that was really my first teacher. That that showed me a way to see <coughs> the world um, on a universal um, mind instead of um, on an earth on earthly existence. So I, I could see, you know, I you've got you know your all these shows are talking about sentient life forms in other galaxies, paranormal activity, supernatural powers. And so um, I started to learn about um, the reality that we can't see. And, and I started studying you know, science and physics. And so I came from a scientific viewpoint. And that brought me to spirituality. And I started picking up books on uh, Eastern mysticism and all the masters, all, this, all the great spiritual teachers of all the religions. And started to realize there was a common theme that they were all teaching. And realizing that all these religions are separating us and that people are seeing the problem is separation. And, and that's what I think goes back to why people can't be kind to one another, is that it's that separation thing. They think that we're separate. Right, and good if, point. Yeah. yeah, and if you just look into to the reality of it, and... Why did ETs make us a separate island? So I don't go into the ET thing. We are the grand experiment. Yeah. <laughs> Although, <laughs> I've studied a lot about ETs and about we extraterrestrials. And I've studied about Zechariah Sitchin's material and the Sumerian. I've gone through all of the study. I went to, through my ET phase. But I, I, I don't think that that's the way right now that we can um, plant that seed to wake up everyone that we are the same, that we are one. It's one avenue, but you have your path. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the science fiction path. And, that's, and I've been there. I've done that. And I think it's, it's, I believe in extraterrestrials. And I believe that there are many things that happen that got us here, not just one story. And I think there's a lot of visitors that came here in our, yeah. in our history. But that, you know, I don't, I don't go there anymore because so many people have different opinions about it. So I, I kind of, I like to stick to um, what, what we can prove. Yeah. And when we go into science, we can prove, if anybody wants to research it, that we are one, that we are from the same thing, that there's a divine essence or energy that makes up all things and all matter, and we are part of that. And so I think that's where we need to go to wake up humanity to understand. Well, and, and once you know that, and you see people beyond their religion and beyond their color and beyond their nation, you st you you understand how to be kind to them because you know that they're you. Mm. Yeah, that's that's one way. So continue. Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, <laughs> so I, I came from a science fiction viewpoint, and I decided that um, I was reading all the books, all the great books of all the spiritual teachers. Um, and I decided I was in Dallas. I just graduated from University of Texas, mm -hmm. and I and I didn't understand why people weren't reading all these books. I knew they weren't reading because we were still fighting each other and not being kind to each other. So I, I had to think about well, you know, how are we going to get this? How how can I get this message out to the world? I'm getting it in these books. How how can the world get it? And the only answer I could get was movies. So I decided, okay, I'm I'm just going to take take off, go to Hollywood, and learn screenwriting. I never thought about directing. I was just going to be a screenwriter, a metaphysical screenwriter. Mm -hmm. And this was 1992, so I started writing my first screenplay. It was called The Skeptic. Uh, it was about, and I still am, it was about a, um, a skeptic that battles his own mind to discover the truth about UFOs, abductions, alien invasions, world domination by fourth dimensional reptilian beings. And <laughs> nobody wanted this script. They were like, this is not for us. I tossed it around Hollywood. I gave it to all these agents. And, uh, Nobody wanted it, so I said, okay, maybe I'll have to wait 10 years, and I'll just start writing another screenplay. Wait for the world to catch up to you. Right, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so I started, um, but I started shooting, that was a short film. Mm -hmm. And I brought a crew together, and I shot, I started shooting it with a little uh, uh, standard DV camera, this was before HD came out. Right. Totally fell through the cracks, the actors, didn't show up because I was trying to shoot with no money over a period of like three months and they were all like phased out. And so <laughs> I said, like, all right, well, I didn't see that as a failure. I saw that as, okay, well, I, I didn't have the money. This movie, this short wasn't really going to be made anyway. It wasn't right for it. It wasn't the time. So I'll start writing a, a feature length and maybe I'll have the money by that time. Um, so. But you were always focused on transformation, huh? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So I am. Um, he when, never got bought into Hollywood, I'm saying. He never, like, shoot him up. <laughs> no. No, I, I, that, that's, I don't, 
you know, I, and I enjoy films and, and suspense and thrillers and stuff like that, but, um, you know, we have to have a balance. We have to bring the spirituality into it. And I think that if we focus on transformational films that are, that are showing us how to uplift our spiritual evolution without using religion, yeah. I think people will be able to finally tap into uh, their connection to the earth and to the universe. And I think that's where we need to go. So how did Three Magic Words come about? So, so I, uh, I found this book by U.S. Anderson called Three Magic Words. Uh, and I read the back and it totally resonated with me because I just finished reading a bunch of books on Tibetan Buddhism. And, and uh, it, it was talking about the third eye and, in that book. And then I saw Three Magic Words right next to it. And I took it home, uh, read it, and found a very simple answer to the common theme that I was that I'd been studying. It wasn't based on the book, but it was inspired oh, by the book. Yeah, and I don't reveal what the three words are. You'll have to um, see not to make you see the film, but because it's, I don't think anybody wants to hear the end of a movie before they see it. No, no. This movie is meant to take you on, a, on a, an experience of self. So, so that book finally deceived in you. It did, and, and lovely Dolores here is in the movie. So uh, she's uh, yeah, what yeah, she yeah. was talking about. Yeah. She's wanting to do Talk a little bit about the I still didn't have any money at all. Oh. I was just <laughs> I was working nine to five job, um, getting fired, find, having to find another job, <laughs> sitting behind desks. Testing time. <laughs> Testing time. Yeah. So I, I got a job at a film school, oh. and I said, okay, well, I could probably use the equipment, you know, when the students aren't using it uh -huh. to make this movie, which is exactly what I did. Oh, uh, you know, you do what you have to do when you have a goal. Yeah, yeah. And I... Because I didn't, I don't see anything that doesn't work out for me. I don't see it as failure. I do it for just out of the love of it, as a hobby. Like you know, I have a lot of friends that are actors, and I tell them, just do it because you enjoy it. Don't don't have expectations. So I didn't have any expectations of how, when, and when the completion of the movie will be. But I had this. I knew I was going to make this movie and follow through with it, no matter what it what it turns into. So, um, so I uh, put a green screen on a wall in my apartment. And uh, met with a, my co-producer Maura Hoffman, mm -hmm. who you know well, yeah. and she knows a lot of these um, great people like Dolores Kim, and uh, <laughs> that know the truth of the message in the movie, that know this theme that I learned in the Three Magic Words book. And so we brought them in, and we interviewed them. And I had no idea what I, what I had. I didn't know how it was going to become about. Um, I just interviewed each one for about an hour, and took all the footage, and then categorized it and put it all together. Um, and put in, put together Rough Cut. And Rough Cut was two hours long, and it had amazing transcendental music by Emory, a dream scene. And, um, and because I was meditating a lot, I, I think it's because I was meditating a lot at the time that I, the film, the Rough Cut, came out very transcendental and very, you know, kind of like, some of the new age people love it, <laughs> but it puts you to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so I took the, so I took, showed it to some mainstream people, and they said, no. <laughs> they said you need to get it reshot, re-edited, rescored, and from that I found someone who said they would do it for not that much money, um, and that's when one of the guests in the film, uh, Goodney Goodison, came through that with the finishing funds to make that happen, and we were able to put together something that came from the rough cut into something that the mainstream can actually understand, and what I like to call the film is it's 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 for um, it's kind of this film of pretty much explain it to you. If you don't know what your children are into, if you think they're, um, because they're <laughs> meditating or they're eating vegetarian or vegan foods and, following, and they like a guru or something, if you don't understand that, this movie will explain what you're trying to do. That's great. Yeah. 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 Just one final word. Um, what influence have you seen? I mean, that's one of it, but what have you seen this film? How has it affected people? Yeah, um, People are, they seem to be very transformed by it. Um, some people are just so happy that they received a confirmation of what they've been learning or what they've been experiencing. Myself a mission, that very mission to do that as long as I'm here. And the way I see things is, um, you know, I think about this a lot when my parents watch the news at the highest volume they could watch it. And all you hear is fear and all you hear is <laughs> all this war and everything, terrorism. I, I think about, I close my eyes and I picture myself on a deserted island, you know, east of Africa somewhere where 
nobody goes completely just no civilization at all except maybe a village that I could live on and my family and if you think about it you could live your entire life on that island and never turn on never, don't have any television no news and you will never hear anything any negative thing going on in the world you could live your whole life and have an entire and the happiest life you could ever have all the way to the end and enjoy your, your, your existence on planet Earth. And when, I, when I, I bring that up because I met to a point where, I mean, I'm, I'm completely aware of all the conspiracies out there, and I believe in a lot of them. But I'm at a point where I'm living in a different dimension. Right. And I talk about, what I mean is I, I'm not going into any of that fear-based um, ideas and turning on the news or listening or, or the TV, and, and I don't go there. I don't put my consciousness there. Right. I focus on my mission. And I focus on love, unity, and and God, and and that's where I'm at at this point.